Have you ever been playing Forager and thought to yourself, I wish there was a bit more to this game? Well, I have the game for you. Above Snakes, or as of right now, Above Snakes Prologue, the demo of Above Snakes. Let me take you through some of the key things that you will do and what I thought about it. One great thing about this game is the fact that you can play with either mouse and keyboard or controller. I recommend controller for the basic gameplay and using mouse and keyboard for all the building type features. One thing this game has over Forager is being able to rotate and zoom in and out the camera to give you a better view. Combat in this game can feel clunky at first, but after going toe to toe with some enemies, it starts to feel better. It's not the smoothest combat out there, but once you get the hang of the timing, it does feel satisfying. One of my favorite things about survival games is resource collecting, and this game is chock full of it. From simply picking twigs off a tree, to completely chopping the tree down, to mining rocks and minerals, there are plenty of resources to collect. You can even chop the trees so they fall into the rocks and they do the mining for you. Be sure to work smarter, not harder, when you can. Now, I'm not sure if there's a safer way to get honey, but the bees don't do a lot of damage, so just take your lumps and get that honey. Just be careful not to keep swinging as the beehive falls down. There is a small chance you might smack it off the edge of the map like I did here. Next, we will look into the four menus you will be spending a lot of time in. Inventory, crafting, stats, and quests. Both the inventory and crafting tabs have subsections neatly organizing all the different things you can store and make. One thing I did notice playing on controller, when you're going through your inventory or the crafting, it will automatically highlight the first thing available, and sometimes the little pop-out window that gives you a better description can block off the little subsections, making it a little hard to see where you're going to be going next. So unless you're familiar with the subsections, at the beginning it can be a little annoying. The stats tab gives you a nice overview of your base stats, your equipment, and your level with different tools and actions. Each level gives you a small bonus to the things you do. The quest tab is pretty straightforward. It shows all of your active quests and what you have to do to complete them. One thing you'll be doing a lot of is cooking some food. The fun thing about this is you can mix and match a whole bunch of different items to get different results. If you throw something together that isn't going to work, it'll just let you know that it's inedible. So no need to worry about wasting resources. Be sure to try many different combinations of items. You may just figure out a new recipe that might be a game changer. Plenty of different kinds of foods out there. Some will restore more hunger, others more health, even some that will restore your fatigue. Some things like fish you will need to skin or gut to get the usable materials to actually cook with, so be sure to double check your inventory. And don't be afraid to try out different items to cook with because you never know what you might get. Now, it's time to go over world building. Just like Forger, you start off on one square and can build in the four cardinal directions. The big thing about unlocking new tiles in this game is everything you do gets you one step closer to being able to put down a new tile. As you add in new tiles, more area open up around the tile to keep expanding into. You start off with just one tile as an option to put down, but don't worry, there are ways to unlock more options. Once you build the cartography table, you can start researching new types of tiles and biomes at the cheap cost of some resources. With new biomes as options, you need to start thinking about how you want to place your tiles to make your world, because biomes have to match on the connecting side to be put down. One type of tile you will get are unique tiles that are connected to quests and you will only be able to put down one after you unlock it. My big tip for world building is as soon as you can, be sure to fully build out a lake. There are ripples just off the lake shore where you can gather water, but only once per cooldown. And in the same ripples, if you have a fishing rod, you can also fish. I found that you can only get two fish per cooldown. If you can get a full lake and four shorelines early on, you won't have to worry too much about staying hydrated and fed. One great thing about unlocking new biomes is you will unlock even more resources you can gather and work with. Like in the plains, you can find cotton, hemp, mint, and vanilla. We talked about building the world, now let's talk about building your home. With the hammer, you are able to remove structures so you can replace them or just get them out of your way. One thing you will need to be able to start your home is a workbench. This will play a big part in being able to progress in the game overall. Once you have some foundations, walls, and roofs, you are now ready to build. 
I found it was easiest to do this with the mouse and keyboard. You can rotate pieces as well as adjust their height. Once you get your first piece down, other pieces will snap to it so you don't have to constantly adjust everything to line up. As you build your house, your shelter level will increase and for each level, you get to choose between three bonuses that you can change on the fly. Be sure to upgrade your workbench as well because the two are connected to be able to progress more. With the workbench at tier 2, you unlock some furniture to craft as well as a tannery and a fletching table, though the fletching table isn't available in the prologue. The tannery makes use of the new materials that you find in the plains, giving you more crafting options. It can take a bit of material to get your shelter to level 2, but it's worth it. In Above Sneak's prologue, you can only get the shelter and the workbench to level 2, so no need to get too crazy with things this time around. Finally, I just want to talk about how lovely the art is in this game, between a painting you can find and all the way to the character art that you get when talking to people. Even a no-named NPC gets nice art. The character art helped me get invested into the NPCs and each one was so unique and really gave them all their own personality. Once you've completed the last quest available in the prologue, you get a nice pop-up reminding you to wishlist the full game, which you really should. But it also lets you know what you can expect from the full game. This whole game was quite the experience, and I highly suggest checking it out for yourself. I put the links in the doobly-doo where you can wishlist the full game. Above Snake's Prologue is free to play and only takes about an hour to an hour and a half to make it through all available quests. But you can keep playing and gathering and building up because your progress will carry over to the main game when it comes out on May 25th. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. This is just my second review video, but I really do enjoy making these and I want to make more. So if you have a game you'd like me to review, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much.